<clears throat> now we're going to go into um, another suggested defense. Um, and it's going to, Rhoda's going to be drawing from the work of Eleanor Stump. You'll have rec you might recognize Stump from early in the book. The reason why, one reason why Rhoda quotes Stump a lot is because Stump was Rhoda's dissertation advisor. Uh, the other part is Stump has been one of the more influential philosophers of religion in the last uh, 30 years or so. Uh, so um, Stump starts, well, Rhoda explains Stump um, with the Cain and Abel story. Um, by the way, Stump has a book that's like four, over 400 pages uh, responding to the problem of evil. So uh, we're only scratching very much the surface of, of that. Um, so anyway, um, uh, Rhoda starts with a Cain and Abel story where um, a Cain, uh, this is on page 150 at that section, murders his brother out of jealousy. Um, now, if God is good and Abel was, you know, innocent, he was just, as the story presupposes, why doesn't God protect him? Uh, or if protection is too much to ask, how could it have been that God would give Abel, I mean, why, why didn't God, like, just warn Abel ahead of time that Cain's going to kill you? Um, so that's the Cain and Abel story. I mean, that's the, you might wonder why God allows this evil. Now, I'm going to read on. This part is worth um, underlining. Uh, Stump points out, now, these questions make an uneasily, an easily unnoticed assumption. The assumption that it is Abel, rather than Cain, who is in most in danger and most in need of God's help. But this assumption is mistaken. If Christianity is true, it is Cain who is most in danger, for he is in danger of eternal separation from God. For Abel, what is at stake is bodily death, which though in itself is a bad thing, will be, a, will be for Abel to a transition, uh, will be for Abel a transition into a fuller union with God. For Cain, what is at stake is his relationship with God and his eternal destiny. So that's a that's a neat point Stump raises. Now, so what Stump is trying to draw us or draw our attention to is there are evils in this life, um, but what's more important is going to be eternal life. Um, so uh, I just took quotes. Um, this is on the handout um, that I thought were most important from the this reading on Stump. And again, Stump is drawing from Thomas Aquinas, the the great medieval philosopher. So one, the life of a human being is divided into two unequal segments. There's going to be our short, finite life and a very long, eternal life. Um, once open, This is, by the way, on Aquinas' view of Christianity. Once openness to God's love at death is crucial, is the crucial determinant of one's eternal destiny. Uh, three, the primary obstacle to a person's flourishing and union with God comes from dispositions in that person's will that incline him to prefer his own short-term pleasure or power over greater goods. Okay. Four, God allows suffering as a sort of medicine in order to provide an opportunity of our moral and spiritual cancer within all of us. And five, pain purges sins, bringing evil doers to humility and stimulate good people to love of God. Okay. So these are a bunch of claims and uh, they're worth exploring i mean uh rhoda kind of expands on them and makes points and it's kind of similar to what we talked about with van and wagon earlier which is uh this this point that stump says um, suffering can be a sort of medicine um and now there are certainly cases like this um i do know of people where because of an illness um, it totally made them rethink they used to be all about uh, money or certain other goals about that were just about their ambitions, and then after um, uh, after an illness and suffering, they actually came to realize what was important about life. They became more humble. Uh, they became um, better people as a result. And um, and and this is the sort of humility that uh, Stump says would stimulate a lot of people toward God. Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, and so there is definitely some truth to that. Um, now, there's going to be a, a, an objection to this, which is that Rotor Stump doesn't talk about here, which is that some evils, they don't move us to become better people. I'm sure some of you are wondering this. They actually just crush us. Uh, they make us worse, it seems. Okay, so uh, what's, I mean, what's Stump or Rota going to say to that? Well, to learn the answer to that, read Stump's book. It's called Wandering in Darkness. Um, you can see for yourself whether she offers uh, a good response. One thing for Stump, though, is 
she doesn't just say that all suffering leads us to become better people. Actually, she th what she does say more is uh, at least many sufferings give us the opportunity to freely choose whether to become better or worse. And the, uh, and the evils help us to make that choice. Um, and so you do see some people in the middle of suffering that because of their free choices, they actually become much better people as a result. Uh, when I was in college, a mentor once told me, um, uh, do, do you, do you, um, he told me, here's how you pick another mentor. This, um, a friend told me, here's how you pick a mentor, which is find someone who has undergone great suffering and as a result of it, they become better people. Um, and that's due to their own free choices. And that's sort of person you want to look for in a mentor. That's what they told me. I don't know if that's really true, but I'm just relaying uh, th this general idea that Stump is trying to push, I think. Um, and so, uh, and then some people, um, they might end up cho choosing bitterness or choosing anger or something else. So, uh, yeah. Now, in the end, does that help with Stump's point? Um, I'm not sure. And in the end, does this help us to uh, give a response to premise one? Um, again, it's, it's not really clear. Uh, but, uh, that's for more discussion. Uh, okay. So to end, uh, this handout, Van and Wagons and Stump's views are supposed to be complementary. In what way? So, uh, and Rhoda spends a section on that. You could combine both. Uh, one difference is that, uh, Van and Wagon just talks about humanity as a whole. Why does God allow evil in humanity among the human population? Um, and then he says, you know, maybe certain people's sufferings might be just like that one extra ain raindrop. For Stump, it's a little bit different. Stump is very person-centric. Um, they call her view um, sufferer-centered. Um, uh, and some people even call her view, a, she has a sufferer-centered theodicy or a sufferer-centered defense, where for each person, the, the evils in our life can be a choice by which we draw closer to God or push farther away from God. So um, so that's the difference between Stump and uh, Van and Wagon. Um, Okay, so that's that on the problem of suffering. Is there more to be said? Yes, there is. And I'll have one more video.